Okay, so in this video, we're gonna be replacing the battery in an iPhone X, and I'll be showing you the proper way to remove the screen without damaging it using one of these heat maps. And we will be replacing the Bluetooth and near field communication antenna, which in this particular device appears to have broken. So we'll be stripping the whole thing down to replace the antenna. As you can see, I've got a screw organizer here to keep all the screws that we'll be removing in order. I've also got this heat map here, which is gonna heat the device up evenly, minimizing any risk of damage to either the screen, the battery inside, or any other components. So the other thing I've got, which is really gonna help, is this screwdriver kit here, which has got pretty much every size of screwdriver you care to mention. It's also got a whole ton of these kind of little spudgers. It's also got these spudgers as well, which are great. So it's just really, really useful and not expensive. I'll put a link in the description to get hold of that for your project. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do, obviously, is remove the screen. So I'm just gonna move the organizer out of the way for the moment while we do that. And to remove the screen, we are going to heat the device up. Now, many YouTube videos will show you heating the device up this way with the screen face down. That is incorrect. iPhones have a metal frame, so you're actually better off heating it with the face upwards. That will heat the metal frame evenly, and the adhesive, of course, is on the metal frame. If you heat it the other way, you can risk damage to the screen. If you're replacing the screen, obviously that doesn't matter, but I highly recommend you, you heat it up with the screen face up. And the temperature you're gonna want, and we are gonna set this now, the temperature you're gonna want is 80 degrees. Can get, get away with 75, but we're gonna go with 80. Some people use 90, but if you're using an OLED screen, you're not gonna to wanna to go above 80. So that temperature is now rising, as you can see on the display, it rises quite quickly on these mats. We're going to go ahead and leave this for five minutes to let the heat take effect and soften that adhesive. The frame of the phone is metal, so this bit here is metal and this bit is plastic. So the where there's this slightly different looking material here on the edge, that's actually the screen. That is plastic, that is not metal. So you want to get underneath that, not underneath the very thin sort of front bit of the, front of the screen there. And probably the hardest part of this repair is just getting that first initial bit with it. The, the spudger goes under the screen there. There it goes. You can see it's getting quite soft, yeah. And that's allowed us to get right in there. That's actually come up very nicely. So as you can see, that's come up very nicely indeed. I've just gone very slightly in there and using the lifting tool made all the difference. Okay, so now we'll get a, a little bit of plastic in there to keep that open. And there it comes. Now, do bear in mind it opens up like a book. So the charging port's down the bottom here. And as you can see, it's opening to the right like a book. Okay, now that it's open, you're definitely going to want to use an, ant an anti-static grounding wrist strap. This blue mat here, this is actually anti-static. I'm not sure if, if this bit is, in fact. Okay, so now that the, the whole phone is cooled down, it's now perfectly safe to open up. And the next thing we need to do is we need to remove these five screws here, holding this this piece of metal down. Now you're gonna need a, a tri screwdriver for that. I have got this one here, which is a, it's labeled as a 0.6, tri.6. Yours might be labeled a Y000. It's the same thing, it's just a different label, okay? So Y0.6 is the same as Y000. The other thing you're gonna to wanna to remember is with these screws, you do wanna keep them in exact order. They are all different. So do make sure that you have your screw organizer to hand so that you can keep them in exactly the right position. Okay, all those screws removed, we can now go ahead and remove that bit of metal. Okay, so the first connector we're gonna to wanna to take off from this row is the battery connector, that's this one here. So we could just use that, or we can get a spudger right in there. Yeah, if you wanna use a plastic tool and not a metal tool for this bit. There it goes, just pushes right up like that. Okay, so the next two that we're gonna remove is this one here and this one here. These are the two screen ribbons, bottom right and on the left here. So it gets the same principle. One's it. There we go. Okay, the last one we'll be removing is this one here. This is for the earpiece and microphone and connects to this ribbon cable here. There it goes. 
And with that, you can take the screen away. Okay, so now we're gonna remove the battery. And to do this, you're gonna to need to remove some really bizarre glue kind of strips that hold the battery down. If you look at this one here, you can just see here or here on this angle, you can just see that there's a little black sort of glue glue strip there, which is attached to the top of the battery. We're actually gonna pull that away from the battery and just rotate it around the tweezers a little bit until we can pull it. Definitely a good idea to rotate it around the... Yeah, just let me use some non-standard glue. I think this is an aftermarket battery. But as you can see, the battery's pretty loose there anyhow. Then there should be three glue strips here as well. But again, I think this is an aftermarket battery. They haven't used proper glue strips, but we will do our best for these. Okay, as you can see, that was, these are not very good glue strips that they've used on this aftermarket battery. So there we go, battery's out. You can see it's been damaged in the past. There was only a small amount of damage done on this occasion, and it will continue to function with, with that damage in place. That's not a problem. Okay, so now we need to go ahead and undo these seven screws, and we'll remove the GSM antenna. This is a Y000 screwdriver again, or a Y0.6 screwdriver, though, exactly the same screwdriver you've been using for all the other screws. Just be aware that this screw and this screw are in fact a crosshead together. They're a very small Phillips screw. They are not a tri screw. So this is a triple zero Phillips screwdriver. This, however, this is a tri screw. Okay, so now we've removed the seven screws. We can remove the GSM antenna. And it pulls up, but of course it has a connector. So we need to Go ahead and just remove that connector. Like so. There we go, comes away quite nicely. Now we can go ahead and remove the speaker. So to do that, we're gonna to have to remove one more Y000 or Y0.6 screw just here on the right hand side of the Taptic engine. Just that one though, not the other one, not the other one on the other side. We don't want to remove the Taptic engine just yet. And you'll see a little metal plate comes away with that. So put the metal plate to one side and then put the screw in the correct place. But you might even want to put the metal plate in the screw in the screw organizer as well. Okay, so we're heating it up to 80 degrees again because there is a bit of adhesive holding the speaker on here. So we're just going to let it heat up, give it about five minutes. Okay, so that's been warming up for about five minutes or so now. Bear in mind as well that you've removed the battery and the screen, so the heat capacity of the phone's gonna be a lot lower, which means it will tend to heat everything else up a little bit quicker. So I'm just gonna protect my fingers there a little bit and I'm just gonna raise the speaker up just here using this corner here. And you can see there's a bit of resistance there. Oh, there's a connector there. Looks like it needs to come off. Oh, let's try here, yeah, that's a bit better. Yeah, so you do need to release that connector. And with a bit of play, eventually, as you can see, it's just a little bit of adhesive there holding the speaker into the speaker port there. So we can remove that, and we can remove the old adhesive as well. Okay, so we can go ahead and turn the heater off. Okay, so now we can disconnect the Taptic engine and to do that, it's just disconnecting this connector here, like so. Okay, so we can remove the final screw securing the Taptic engine, which is a Phillips. So I've got Phillips triple zero in here. It is not a Y triple zero. And now we can remove the Taptic engine altogether. Now we can go ahead and start to look at the cameras on the main board. Okay, so you're gonna want the phone to remain warm, so I recommend you carry on uh, actually on the on the heat proof mat or use a hairdryer. And you're gonna to wanna to heat these cables up here. So there's three little ribbon cables here. And before you remove them, obviously, you're gonna to wanna to disconnect them. So while it's heating up again, I'm just gonna go ahead and remove the connectors here. Just literally just clip it up. That one actually is pretty loose, that one. That one needs a bit of encouragement. And 
That one there is pretty, again, needs a bit of encouragement, but you can see there's not a lot holding it down there. So it's all pretty warm actually, but. Yeah. And now that they're all nice and warmed up, and loose, you can then remove the cameras and the face ID sensor. Now I can turn the temperature off. Okay, so the next thing you're gonna to wanna to remove is these two screws just here. They are, again, Phillips triple zeros. And it's this one here, and then you'll be able to remove the metal bracket that they're securing. There it goes. And now we can go ahead and disconnect all of the ribbon connectors that are on the board here. Okay, so now we can go ahead and remove the three screws securing the main board into the case. And let's let you get this little, this little bit of metal come away with the third screw there. I'll again keep that so small, keep it in the organiser. So we just have one connector just here, which is still causing an issue. Now we can remove the main board from the case. Okay, so now we've exposed the Bluetooth and near field antenna just here. Really short, really small little thing. This is why it's at the top of the phone. They always tell you to use the top of your phone when you're using near field. So there should be a little bit of adhesive underneath the antenna just here. So again, we're just gonna heat it up again. If you haven't got a heating mat, then use a hairdryer and just get, just get that softened up so we can remove this and put the new one on. Okay, so that should be pretty, pretty warm by now. Um, so we'll go ahead and just get that disconnected. Okay, so now all the adhesive is deactivated. Last thing that remains, I'll turn the temperature off again. The last thing that remains is to take this tiny little screw, uh, screw out just here. That is a Phillips triple zero, not a Y triple zero. So we can get our screwdriver in there. There it comes. We can now remove the Bluetooth and near field antenna. Well, it doesn't look like there's anything wrong with this one. Normally you've got a tear in it or something like that, but there's no obvious tear in this one. Anyhow, we've taken it off, we'll replace it. There is a problem with the near field, so we'll replace it. Okay, so here's the new near field and Bluetooth antenna. You can see, you can just see in the front, but if I flip it over, you can see clearly there's a removable bit of plastic there, which is for the adhesive. So we'll remove that and we'll get it located in that hole. The first thing we're gonna do is get the, uh, the screw in and get it sort of bent into place first, get that screw in. There's actually no adhesive just here, it's only on the side bit here. And I guess it's quite easy to break as you open the case, so I guess that's how some of them break. Looking good. It's in there, it's nice. Okay, so just before you reinstall the main board, it's just worth checking that your SIM card removal spigot, it's this bit just here. Just make sure that's still in place, because if you look on the inside, there's actually nothing holding it in place, and in my case, it actually wasn't. It was actually loose inside the case. So just be careful, and it will only go the larger end goes this end, the smaller end goes this end on the outside of the case. So just make sure, and when it's when it looks correct, it should look look a bit like that. Okay, so now we can get the main board back in. Make sure you ESD grounded. Personally, I like to secure the main board before putting the the ribbon cables back in particularly given the SIM card holder could just go out of alignment there. So I just want to make sure that that goes straight back on. Just remember these are Phillips triple zeros. I'm going to start with the middle one, which is this one here. I'm just going to put that in half a turn and then do the top one. And again, a half, or well, maybe a full turn there. Give that one a little bit more. And then we can get this final one on down here. Now remember there was a little metal corner, basically, which I believe is something to do with electromagnetic interference protection. So. It's literally just a piece of metal conductor and it conducts between the case and the PCB so it makes sure there's a good connection so I'm pretty sure that's there for ESD or EMC protection of some sort so that just drops on like that and then you can get the screw in. Okay so that's on, another one can be tightened up now.
Okay, so the next step is to get the metal bracket back in place, which actually connects up with that near field antenna, so therefore can only assume forms part of it. And if you look at this end here, that actually goes underneath the near field antenna that we replaced earlier. So this must form part of the antenna itself as well. The way to get this in is go vertical and then drop it down. Okay, that's quite happily just sitting there now. And then we'll get this bit over the top. So it's going through three bits of metal that screw there, so it's going to need a fair bit of effort behind it, this one will be quite straightforward. So we'll get the straightforward one half on first. Half on, there we go. And the slightly harder one, we'll get that on there all the way. Okay, so that's super important, so particularly given the nature of this particular repair, so that should be good to go. Okay, so now that we've got the main board secured, now we can actually replace all of the ribbon cables that are connecting to it. And it's just a case of just pushing them on. To be honest, the easiest way is to use your fingers, <laughs> without a doubt. Okay, so now that's on, now we can get the front camera and the Face ID module back on, which is this bit here, this guy here. You've got to bear in mind that you've got these two sort of gold these two sort of finger connectors here, they want to touch down on these two plates here uh, to make good contact. Okay, so that's that's seated in position now, those finger connectors, that's why it's bouncing up and down because there's a little bit of spring to those finger connectors. So now we can push the connectors in to the main board. Okay, cool, now we can get the battery in. Uh, in this case we'll be using a new battery. Hey, I really hope this video is helpful. If it is, do please consider hitting the like and subscribe button. Back to the video. Okay, so if your battery doesn't have adhesive strips on the back, you will need to get yourself some adhesive strips as well. However, I'm using a really high quality battery, which comes pre-prepared with adhesive strips on the rear. And also, interestingly, this, this particular battery has a higher capacity. It actually has 3150 milliamp hours, and the old battery had 27 16 milliamp hours so quite a significant boost to the capacity of the new battery so i'm literally just going to remove this plastic adhesive backing get it located and press it down firmly okay and it's important to note that you should never if you are using the adhesive strips you should never put the adhesive onto the wireless charging module here like the guy that did before me who replaced repaired this as you can see because he did it wrong and he put the glue strips on the wireless charging module it has destroyed the wireless charging module. In fact, we may need to replace that. Okay, so as you can see on here, it's very clearly away from the wireless charging module area. Okay, so battery's in place. I'm not gonna press it down just yet because we've still got these bits to get in here and if there's any movement needed, I wanna have it. So the next bit that needs to go back in is the Taptic engine. There's a little alignment lug just there, which is quite nice. So remember with the Taptic engine, just use this screw here and this screw here. Do not use that screw there yet. And again, remember these are Phillips triple zero screws, these. I'm just gonna go ahead and just get the connector on there, just so it's not in the way. Okay, so now we can install the speaker module. Now remember, we had to warm it up to remove it because of this adhesive here. Now if you want to retain the full functionality you probably will want to replace that that just there but to be honest I don't think we need to, I think we're fine. Okay and with the speaker into position and connected up here we can now get this first screw in just here. Just remember that this is a Y000 or Y0.6 and you're going to also need the metal plate that goes just above the connector there as well. Okay, so we're not gonna put any more screws in until we've got the GSM antenna in. And before to get the GSM antenna in, just be, be conscious that the connector on the main board is there and the connector on the antenna is just there. Once you've got that set, you are pretty much home and, home and dry. It's quite hard to do that one with your fingers. You probably are gonna need a spudger or the back of your tweezers or something like that to, uh, to get that guy in. Now we can get the seven screws in. And again, remember these are all Y000 or Y0.6 for these guys. Okay, so with changing the screen, you are gonna to need to change this speaker 
assembly uh, over from this the old screen over to the new screen if you've got a decent new screen you should have these sort of plastics here but if not you're going to need to transfer the plastics across as well so it's quite simple really and it's just the tri screws the y triple zero or y 0.6 screws just three of them make sure you keep them in the right order and there's a little niblet that comes with this top one so be sure to keep that as well Okay, once you've done that, then you can fold this section down and then you'll find there's another section just here which you just need to gently encourage up. This is the microphone here. You're going to probably need some sort of giant magnifier so you can see what you're doing. There it goes. Just a teeny bit of glue holding that in place in the old one. Tedious, but and then that folds across like so and then you've got a tiny last bit there to come there it comes that is really tough to get that out so just do be careful follow the order that i did there and um, be super careful okay here's the new screen okay so once you've got this bit in here and this bit in here you then want to fold this over you want to fold this over and then you want to get this section here, you want to get that mounted down into this section here that you already put down. Okay, that's the first thing to get down. All right, once you've got that down, then you can concentrate on the microphone, which is this bit here. And you can push that into place at the top here. Oh, actually, I kind of both need to go at the same time. Get the microphone into place. There it goes. And so now you need to make sure that the microphone's in place and that this section here is in place. Once that's done, this can then fold over. Okay, so now you can put these Y triple zero screws or Y 0.6 screws back in. I'm just going to put them half in. And make sure you get this gold niblet back on this center screw here. Do make sure you get the orientation right of it. Like that. So the, the little tiny bit on the right hand side of it, that goes down and over. And this bit at the front here, that sticks up to the front. Uh, now we can get the screw in. Okay, get the final screw on. Okay, so that's it now. The screen can go back on the phone. Okay, so now we can put the screen on just to test it. We're not going to fully assemble everything back together yet. We're just going to put the new screen on and we're just going to just see how everything's operating. So to do that, remember it opened like a book. So, so we're going to want to get the screen connectors on. There's that one. Okay, so now the display is connected. Now we can get the battery connected. That must be the last connection we make. Let the display just sit comfortably on the phone and turn it on so let's put the sim in check that everything works including the geosim so as you can see everything seems to be working quite nicely so with all of that done we can then turn it back off and start to glue in the display so I literally just got to go around the edge of the case just here with a pair of tweezers Okay, that's it, all the adhesive stripped off. Now we can go ahead and clean up these edges using an earbud and some isopropyl alcohol, some IPA. Okay, it's all nice and clean. Now you can get some glue on and get the screen on. Okay, so it turns out that the cable that we changed earlier, this is literally, this isn't actually an antenna. This is a connector to the antenna. This connects from the antenna to the main board. The actual near field antenna is this metal bar that we took out earlier. That's the actual antenna, as far as I can tell. And this guy here is actually just the connector between the antenna and the main board, making sure that the RF properties are correct. So this is the bit that tends to go. As I say, it didn't look like it had gone on mine, but I replaced it anyway. The actual steel bracket there, that's very unlikely to go, isn't it? But there you go, just for accuracy, this, this metal bracket looking like device, U-shape, that is the antenna. Okay, so the final part of this repair is we're just gonna apply some glue now around the around the edge, now that's all cleaned up. Now you can get tubes of glue and you can do it that way. That gets very messy, it's not very accurate. I prefer to get this stuff, it costs very little, about two pounds in the UK, two dollars in the US. And this will, if you apply it, 
will ensure that you can continue to use your phone in a, a waterproof way. You can see um, you have to match it up onto the screen to really get an idea. So you can see in fact that the, the slight variation here, this little extra cutaway here and here, that actually makes sense to align with this section here. So actually it wants to go on, um, bear in mind this is going to go on like this, like a book. So you actually want it on like that. So the, the slight extra cutaway bits on the bottom right there. So that's, that's worth checking with the screen to make sure it makes logical sense. Okay, I have to say that was not as easy as I thought. And as you can see, I've made a complete pig's ear of it. So I'm actually gonna go and get some, some of that glue that I was saying don't use. I'm gonna get some glue and just, just shore it up on the bits where it's not, not looking very good. So yeah, not too sure about that. Yeah, I mean, it's done most of it, but you can see it's pretty thin there. I'm gonna to have to fill that in, that's non-existent. Uh, this looks terrible, I'm gonna to have to redo that. Yeah, I think maybe using a tube of glue might be better, honestly. Okay, so I've got my T7000, uh, I think get T9000 now, but it's all kind of the same stuff, really. Okay, so yeah, I've just really just touched it up where it's not looking too good. Okay, so now that I've just reapplied a bit of glue in the areas where it didn't quite work there, that's all ready for the screen to go back on, so we can now go ahead and reattach the screen. So, if you remember, I opened up like a book, so all we need to do is we need to go and put these three connectors in into these three positions and then get the, the metal cover back over the top with the screws which we've kept organized in our iPhone screw organizer. Remembering obviously to put the screws back in the right place because they are all of a different length, every one of them. Okay, so now this bracket's down, we can go ahead and just clip it back down. Obviously go along the edge, make sure that the clips are all engaged, that you've pressed right down on the edge. If you have used regular glue, make sure you wipe any excess straight off. There you have it. That's how you fix your iPhone 10 complete teardown.